class and we are going to learn how to get user input, which means asking the user for some information that we'll use in our program. For example, you could ask the user for their name, store it in the string variable, then refer to the user by their name later on. In this case, we want to use something called a scanner, which captures the user's input in a way that lets you store it in a variable. We could create the scanner ourselves, but this would be a lot of unnecessary work because somebody else has already done it for us. There, that's one of the great things about programming. We almost never have to reinvent the wheel because we can usually work off of the code that someone else has already written for us. To do this in Java, we need to import a library. Libraries are just collections of related code that you can import into your project. The library with the code for scanner is called Java Util. Importing libraries is usually easy. For this library, just add this code to the top of your class. That's all it takes to be able to use scanners. Imports are one of the few times we're allowed to write code outside of the class definition. Now we need to create an instance of the scanner class. If you think of a class as a cookie cutter, then an instance of the class is a cookie itself. You can do this by adding this code. This line is a bit confusing, so we'll talk about the parts of it. The first word, scanner, means we're making a new variable and its type is scanner, instead of something like int or string. Right after is the name of the variable, same as always. In the next video, we'll learn more about this. Bye, coders!